Okay, here we're going to look at the diesel cycle, and the only difference between the diesel cycle and the auto cycle is how heat addition occurs. And heat addition occurs at a constant pressure rather than a constant volume, but all other processes are identical between the diesel and the auto cycle. Just process two to three where I have constant pressure instead of constant volume. Now because of that, when I do the air standard, the preferred analysis, that process two to three looks a little different because I actually have some work going on at process two to three, which is going to be again constant pressure process, so it's that pressure times the change in volume. Applying the um, first law equation, right, where the change in energy is Q minus the work, I get an equation that looks like this. And what happens is then Q actually equals, you, you know, the change in U plus PV if I rearrange this equation, remembering that U plus PV actually is H. So even though this is a closed system for process or states two and three, I'm actually going to look up my H values in order to calculate my, my Q value, okay, my heat addition. Okay, so that's the difference between the diesel cycle and the auto cycle is this um, constant pressure process that does a little bit of work that I need to take into account. So I look up enthalpy for states 2 and states 3. All other states are, are, are the same. Okay, um, Thermal efficiency, therefore, again, is the work over Q in, where the work I can also write as you know, the work of the cycle is also Q of the cycle, so that's Q in minus Q out, which is 2 to 3 minus 4 to 1, okay? So 2 to 3 over 2 to 3 gives me 1 minus Q4 to 1 over Q2 to 3, and that's where I have U4 minus U1 over H3 minus H2. Again, H, because of that constant pressure process, uh, my Q in is actually delta H, Okay, so that's the thermal efficiency using the air standard analysis. Now we have this other thing called the cutoff ratio, and basically that's uh, based on okay how much volume changes um, you know during that um, uh, constant pressure heat addition. So essentially, it's a ratio of volume three to volume two. Volume three uh, being the start of the isentropic expansion. Okay, volume two being at the end of the compression. Okay, so it's basically that that volume ratio of the constant pressure heat addition. Okay, now because I have that again change in volume, process three to four is going to look a little bit different. That's my other isentropic expansion as far as how I calculate and set state four. So again, because it's isentropic, I use the relative pressure ratio four over three. Okay, and what I can do is I can actually separate, basically multiply and divide by volume two. So I have V4 over V2. However, the last process is constant volume, so V4 is the same as V1. That's why that first term here is V1 over V2, because V2, uh, or I mean V4 and V1 are the same. Okay, um, then I have V2 over V3, which again, by definition, is just the inverse of the cutoff ratio. So I can Using my compression ratio, which is the same definition, which is V1 over V2, same as before, and this cutoff ratio, I can find the relationship between state 4 and state 3 for that isentropic process that I have there. So those are some differences in the analysis of the diesel cycle versus the auto cycle. Anything not there is the same between the two. Okay. Now, for the analysis I don't like, the cold air standard analysis where we assume constant specific heat, which is a terrible assumption. Okay, however, we get some qualitative understanding of what's going on. Um, one to two, that first isentropic process is the same as it was for the auto cycle. However, then that second isentropic process, I have that temperature ratio equaling uh, the cutoff ratio over the compression ratio up to the K minus 1, where again, K is constant. That's the specific heat ratio. My um, thermal efficiency is that big, ugly equation right there. And again, it's related to the specific heat ratio, the cutoff ratio, the compression ratio, all these sorts of things. Again, I'm not a big fan of the cold air standard analysis. It's there. You can use it if it explicitly tells you to use it. But in my opinion, the air standard analysis is the preferred method and should be what you should be doing, looking up H and U values and tables and things of that nature using the process laid out right here.